Hello, my name is Alex Isles and welcome to Ingram Valley in Northumberland National Park. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about who were the Beaker people and what did they do when they came into Britain. So to start off with, the Beaker people, just to define them, for a long time they were defined by what they made, the Beakers. Now they are a Bronze Age culture and to give you some context, the Bronze Age in the British Isles is around about 2500 BC to 800 BC and it covers a period when a brand new technology comes into the British Isles which is obviously bronze smelting and the ability to make bronze tools. Now we have a, two different peoples who come together to form the British uh, Beaker people and to come into the British Isles and form the culture that would eventually take over all of the British Isles during the Bronze Age. Now this are uh, two different groups. First of all, we have the Yamna and the Yamna population start off in the steppes of uh, modern day uh, Ukraine or the Pontic steppe in that region. They then, over the course of thousands of years, migrate through Central Europe, through into Germany and arrive in the Netherlands. And when they arrive in the Netherlands, they mix with a new group of people who are the Beaker people proper. And they started off in northern Portugal and Spain and then migrated around the coastline up into Brittany, along the French coast and then arrived in the Netherlands as well. There seems to have been a mixing of cultures there and when this mixing of cultures happens these particular Yamna people adopt the Bika style. They adopt the Bikas um, as, a, a, as a type of pottery because before that they used a type of pottery called corded ware. And when they adopt the Bikas they then come into the British Isles and they just start settling across the whole country. And then when people have done genetic research, and it's really interesting, there's a, a number of different uh, geneticists working on this. Specifically, there's a gentleman called Dr. Tom Booth, and you can find him on Twitter as Boothicus. Um, he is a very interesting uh, doctor. He's done a lot of research into the genetic history of the British Isles. But when the Beaker people move into the British Isles, there is a total population replacement um, from the bodies that we actually have from this period. And from the bodies we have in this period, what we see is that the burials are taken over by the new beaker population. And it seems that these beaker populations just come in and from about 2500 BC, they take over the whole of the British Isles. They start farming, they bring in bronze technology and they are a new dominant people. But the interesting thing is that the Neolithic population seems to have a resurgence around about 2100 BC, which suggests that they weren't wiped out. Unfortunately, historically, this could suggest a far worse situation where the Neolithic people are now no longer represented in funeral monuments and are in fact a, taken over as slaves or are seen as second class citizens. Their burials are no longer in important locations, but the Bronze Age people do have a small amount of Neolithic DNA within their population. Now 2100 BC, around about 2200 BC, there seems to be some form of climate change causing a Bronze Age uh, collapse, a mini collapse in the period that then causes for you to go into another period, the Middle Bronze Age. Now when that occurs, it could be that what happens is that there's a, maybe a population drop due to a lack of resources, a lack of living space now because upland areas may not be suitable for farming anymore, all sorts of things like that. And so because of this, with a population drop, the Neolithic people are now marrying into the Bronze Age population because there isn't this separation anymore. You have to pull in together. Everyone needs to come together for society or civilization as it would have been seen then to survive. That's at least one possible theory. Another theory is that maybe by that point, the Neolithic people are starting to be integrated into society a lot more alongside the Beaker people. And they're seen as one people, one culture. The Neolithic farmers, even though genetically they might be different, now see themselves as Beaker people as well. They're dressing in their fashion. They're wearing the same clothes as them. And so because of that, there is an intermingling at that period, which then causes for the genetics uh, to be mixed and that so is a slight increase in beaker and uh, neolithic pop uh, DNA at that time and then it continues on from there but we're not entirely certain I would think maybe a uh, more along the lines of possibly the enslavement and the replacement theory because what we see is that during the Bronze Age 
I think it's a 90, uh, 94, 95% replacement of the previous population group, which just shows you how widespread it was. And even today, that Bronze Age population, the Beaker population, makes up the majority of the British Isles genetics. So that just shows you how substantial that was that it just took over and the, the new population that came through, this Bronze Age population, totally replaced the population that was there beforehand. And that there is the sort of the story of this new migration of people who come across from the Pontic Steppe and from uh, northern Spain, northern Portugal, uh, two groups mixing together in the Netherlands and then coming across as the Beaker people to settle the British Isles and to change the history of this island forever with a brand new population group. Uh, there is an interesting theory as well that these people may be the, uh, the well genetically they are the baseline for the Celts but they could also have brought over Celtic culture for the first time and the Celtic language but that is maybe a debate for another day because uh, there are subsequent migrations from the French Alps around about uh, 1600 BC that settle in southeast England. So again we can see a difference maybe between uh, the north and the west of Britain which would have had the older Beaker people culture continuing and then in the southeast we have a new culture coming in as well but all the time across the North Sea, across the English Channel and throughout the Atlantic trade network which would have connected in with Portugal and Spain there's a constant move of cultures and trade and technology between all of those different areas which results in the development of what we would eventually term as Celtic culture in the British Isles until eventually obviously the Romans invade Britain in 43 AD wholesale and start settling right the way through till the early 400s when the Roman government collapses. So that gives you a sort of an overview of the Bronze Age population in the British Isles and how we see the Neolithic farmers who previously lived in this land being either subjugated or fully replaced by this new migration of people who have come from all over, uh, from, come from two different locations in Europe. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and it's maybe answered some of the questions for you of how the Bronze Age population ended up in the British Isles and I really hope that if you aren't already you like and subscribe, share this video with your friends and alongside that as well if you've really enjoyed it consider supporting me on Patreon because then you can help steer some of the content for this channel in the future. Otherwise I really hope you're safe and well and look forward to sharing more history with you in the near future. Thank you very much.